Okay, so today what we're looking at is the K1 Conrods, um, now, I guess, owned by Wiseco. So, when you get your box, it's going to look like this, and uh, it's going to have a Wiseco label on the box. Um, and then on the inside, I wouldn't say they're super well packaged, but uh, considering all the extra lengths that... Um, William over at PRW uh, was willing or did when putting them in the box to ship them to me. I'm not actually all that worried. They do have a hard fiber card between them to make sure they don't bump into each other and cause damage. So overall, nothing really to worry about. And when you get your rods, there's going to be uh, three major things in there. You're going to have your rods, obviously. And you're going to have this. Now hopefully yours didn't explode like like mine did and ruin my wonderful sticker. But there's a assembly instructions and you want to make sure you follow those. Otherwise you don't have warranty, uh, I guess. Uh, and you get your rod. And when you get your rod, you take it out of its little sealed package. And it's covered in like a protectant waxy kind of stuff. And that'll come off the... You can either take it off before you assemble your engine, or you can just allow the engine to uh, do its thing naturally. So something I, uh, I know I'm going to get asked is, why did you opt for K1 rods versus, well, pretty much any of the competitors? And there's a couple of reasons. One, these rods are going to do exactly what I need them to do for this build. Um, the other thing is, is uh, they're on the more inexpensive side, as well as they uh, are a really good rod to begin with. Um, so I don't regret my purchase or anything like that, and they're really good. So here's a K1 rod, and you can tell the K1 rod because it's got K1 uh, stamped on it. And then this is a factory rod. Both of them use a pressed-in um, wrist pin bearing. Um, both of them use a uh, split end cap. And both of them are bottom fastened. I think pretty much every Gen Coupe con rod is a bottom fastened. Actually, I think most cars are bottom fastened, so I don't know why I started talking about that. Uh, now, some of you guys are going to get uh, wanting to know some of the numbers and stuff behind it. And so I did all my weights and stuff, and I put them on this piece of paper. So I'll be able to refer to that while we're going along. Um, now, the weights that I have are an overall weight, not an end-to-end -end weight. End-to-end -end weighting is done um, when you're balancing the rotating assembly. Um, so all I'm talking about today is the overall weight, okay? Now, the factory, this is my number three piston, okay? Um, it was, uh, well, cylinder three. Um, and there's a couple of things that, in my opinion, uh, Hyundai did very right. And a couple of things that they did very wrong. And the, this product review is really going to cover a more technical aspect um, versus just saying, hey, by the way, this is fantastic. Okay. Uh, the OE Conrod is a cast Conrod uh, in 20, uh, 2008 to 2011 production engines. Okay. Uh, in 2012, they started producing engines for the 2013, which use a center forged cast rod, uh, center forged rod, and that's basically a, a whole different technology than what we're going to talk about. The K1 rod is a complete forged rod. Um, I guess, I guess it's a cast forged rod. Uh, I'm not a hundred percent certain on that, um, but it is a stronger rod. Now. Um, in terms of overall weight, my OE number three rod was 583 grams, 
and this K1 rod, not a lightweight, is 545 grams. Okay, so we're talking uh, just about 40 grams lighter. So nothing fantastic, but it is it is lighter. Um, an important note is the K1 rods had a range of half a gram. So um, the variance as they sit now, the variance between the rods is half a gram. Um, most of them weighed literally identical to each other. There was only the one rod that weighed half, uh, yeah, only the one rod that weighed half a gram less than the other ones. Now, um, the OE rod, on the other hand, there was a range of two grams, so this number three rod was 584, but the number two rod was 582, and the number four rod was 583. So Hyundai doesn't do a fantastic job of uh, matching their, their rods, uh, in my opinion, but, I mean, what else are you going to expect from a 200-horsepower economy car, or economy sports car? Um, the OE rods are all, um, they all have a serial number, uh, not stamped in, but, uh, printed on it, and all of their end caps have matching numbers to them, as well as indicators, and it is a split rod, it's a cracked rod, and that means that they crack this off, okay? The K1 rod has no serial number whatsoever on it. Um, it is also a cracked rod. It means they crack this, like I said, they crack this off. Um, and it has numbers stamped on it to indicate, to match the, um, the rod body with the end cap. Now, unlike the, the, the major thing that um, I would say to fault this rod, the, the factory rod, isn't the rod itself, but the bolts that are used to hold the end cap on. And they, uh, da, 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 da. they, um, I'm not sure if you'll be able to see it, but they've actually got a little bit of a stretch to them already. And, uh, that stretch means, one, this rod bolt can never be reused. Um, but it also means that the bolt was being overworked as it was. So that's where, I guess, you'd really fault it. The other thing about the rod that I'm not particularly impressed with is uh, the bearing caps... Uh, or the bearings can actually be put in either direction and they have these grooved flutes okay and these grooved flutes are literally just friction keeping the bearing from spinning that's a really really piss poor design Hyundai um, whereas the K1 rod uses a cap style locker, which means that where the cap ends, the um, groove actually on the on the bearing, or the, the keeper on the bearing, actually pushes against the rod, and on this one pushes against the, um, the, the main cap, and then on the other side the bearings push against each other in order to hold each other in place. And that is a much superior method of retaining the, uh, the bearings to keep them from spinning. The K1 rod also uses ARP2000 bolts, uh, which are much sturdier uh, than what Hyundai used, and are rated for a much higher tensile PSI, which is basically their, their ability to resist breakage or stretching. Um, 
in regards to uh, bearing sizes, they are perfectly interchangeable. If you, for whatever reason, wanted to, you could reuse your Hyundai um, bearings in a K1 rod. They're they're identical in that in that sense. Um, you would think that the K1 rod would weigh less, considering that it's a uh, um, I think it's called an H style rod. It's got this groove through here, and it's grooved through here. Um, but because it's forged, the metal is a lot more compact. It's more tighter. It's it's a higher density. So that's where you get the weight back. Is um, despite the fact that they've actually removed material, the density of it overcomes the the material removal. Um, the wrist pins completely interchangeable if you wanted to just upgrade your rods and keep your Hyundai pistons. Um, you're more than able to. Uh, they just swap over. Another design change that K1 made is Hyundai uses a large single oil flute at the top, whereas K1 uses two smaller oil flutes on either side. So the oil that pools at the bottom is what's getting squirted out. Um, but there's not all that much oil that actually gets up there, I'm afraid to say. The, the one thing that I kind of found a little bit interesting is that Hyundai doesn't push oil through the piston, uh, which is not what I'm used to seeing. I'm used to seeing a little hole at the bottom here for oil to travel through the piston and lubricate the wristband. But Hyundai seems to use a passive lubricating system um, with the oil squirters. Um, so, in my opinion, that this is a not not to fault K1, but to fault Hyundai's design and K1's just doing what they're they're allowed to do. Um, but it doesn't seem to have created a performance or lubrication issue because I I haven't seen all that much of a complaint. Now K1's bearing at the top is more robust. It's better pressed in. This one, the Hyundai one, has got quite a bit of play, and with a small press I'd actually be able to get that out pretty easy. Whereas K1 they use a, um, a flush fit bearing here so there's no groove at the top for contaminants to stick in or anything like that. Uh, so yeah it's a in my opinion worth the money much better rod and uh, I'm pretty pleased with it. Uh, I don't know why I grabbed my caliper because there's really nothing to measure. Uh, the K1 rods are a standard 86 millimeter throw. Obviously without changing your crank you don't change your throw. Well I guess you can but w whatever. Um, and that's pretty much it for the rods. So if you guys have any questions or comments put them in the uh, section below or post them up on Project Woodstock on GenCoop.com. Or find me on Facebook. Snoopy Panda on Facebook is now up and running, I guess you could say. Uh, so thanks for watching, and stay tuned because we've got a couple more products that we're going to be reviewing from Piranha Raceworks.